um, thank you once again to all of you for joining us and we shall get started and we'll add some more people in as they come through. So um, obviously this will be uploaded onto the school's YouTube channel so you can refer back to it because it has got all the information um, that I'm going to share with you. So just a, a quick sort of quote to start with, um, teaching a child to read and keep that child reading and talking, and we'll explain the importance of that in a moment, and we will change everything, and I mean everything, and that's Jeanette Winterson, and it really is paramount to children's progress in school. Um, as much reading as you can do, all the evidence points to the fact that the more children read, the higher they achieve, the more rounded they are as individuals, um, and the better prepared they are to enter the world after they leave school. So who is the programme for? Read Write Inc is um, a programme that's predominantly for Key Stage 1, so those children in reception, um, which a lot of your children are, um, Year 1 and then part of Year 2. Most children will come off by about Christmas time in Year 2, um, bar a pandemic, and um, then the, they will go on to the comprehension element of the Year 2 curriculum. Um, obviously, some children do progress at different stages, and that's fine. And that's the joys with Read Write Inc. is because it caters for children all the way up to year six. So they've got different programs that will support children all the way through, um, so that no child is left behind. And that is, is the real key message from this. Um, the program itself is also wonderful for children who might have additional needs. So dyslexia. It's very pictorial. It's very repetitive. Um, so it is wonderful for every single child in school. So our aims at Lordswood is that year one children obviously pass in the phonics screening check um, and they can read above national expectation. It's not all about the data side of things. It is about the fact that they can pick up a book that they love, um, albeit it might be Harry Potter, it might be Rainbow Magic, um, and they can read it and they can enjoy it. And that's what our, our expectation is. We would like the reception children to be able to read CCVC words, CVCC words by the end of reception. Now they might sound sort of a bit alien. Um, basically the C stands for consonant and the V stands for vowel. So things like um, ship and um, sock are CCVC and CVCC words. Um, also the red words, and I'll be touching upon red words a bit later on, they are words that your children might say you can't thread a red and that basically means that they're non-decodable words so they can't be um, segmented they can't be blended so I'm just going to double check um, there's no one else in our waiting room so I've got no messages coming up on my things bear with me two seconds okie dokie there we go um, so so year two children will be off the program by Christmas ideally and onto comprehension activities, which I mentioned to you a bit earlier. So Read Write Inc is a systematic approach. It is step by step. It's very methodical, very easy to follow. Um, Ruth Miskin, who is the lady that um, introduced Read Write Inc to the curriculums across the whole country. Um, she's very much, there's lots of praise in it. There's lots of pictures in it. There's lots of rhymes in it. The children absolutely love it. Um, you have things called ditties, which you can see on the screen here. It's that red book where it says pin it on. Um, they're very easy to read um, decodable books for the emerging reader. You've got the lovely frog in the middle. That's Fred. And uh, Fred usually sits on our shoulders and he helps us to blend and segment our words. You've also got the phonic cards um, at the bottom. Now, these can be purchased. They're not necessary, but they can be purchased off of Amazon. Um, just make sure you get the correct set for your child and obviously if you're unsure of that please do get in contact with us and we can guide you on that one and the sound mat on the um, FSU drive the google drive um, you can access those resources um, alongside some of the other ones I'm going to talk about a bit later on so the pronunciation of sounds is absolutely fundamental um, and I can't explain that enough the we've done a video um, on the YouTube channel, which I've got the link there. So that will obviously be on the presentation um, at a later date, but you can just find it under early years on the YouTube channel. The key ones to think about are the um, W, which makes the ooh sound. It's not a W, it's a ooh. Um, also making sure that the TH, we touched upon it last night, but making sure that when they're doing the TH sound, they're special friends, which basically means two letters that go together to make one sound. Um, that they are um, pronounced with their tongue out. So it's 
um, and they're the really really sort of key ones there are some other ones on there as well like x which is x um, so you can have a little play on those at your leisure and i've taken all the way from set one to set three sounds on that video i won't play it now because uh, i'm conscious of the time to try and get through all the slides so the speed sounds charts, um, the simple speed sounds one, which you can see on the left hand side of the screen, um, they are the sounds that your children will be learning in reception and they are what we call our set one sounds. So the way that a speed sounds chart is set up, and again, there is one of these simple ones on the um, Google Drive. Um, basically, every column that is on there in the individual boxes, they are one sound. So you've got um, the C and the K. If you, see, if you see those two, they make the k sound. So they're actually in the same box. And you can also, if you've got this printed out at home, you can add sounds because obviously to write every single sound in the English language would be there forever. Um, but the CK, when it's together, also makes the k sound. So we just add that on as a post-it note um, because for some reason, Ruth Miskin didn't add that onto um, her speed sounds chart. So, but yeah, you can add the sounds as they go through. Um, sort of the sounds they come across and add them to the speed sounds chart but it will take you all the way you've got the, the uh, all the way up to the ch they're all your set one sounds then you start eking into the set two ones which is the a the e the i the o um, and, and going further now the complex speed sounds chart um, gets it from its name that's when you start exploring that letters can make different sounds um, and although they can appear differently just looking at the s one You've got the S, then underneath it, you've got the SS, then the SE, then the C, and then the CE. And the children have to learn that all of those, when they see them in a word or they want to write a word, all of those still make the S sound. So it's not as easy as it was in the um, reception years. So we're sort of teaching and then we're expanding upon that with the complex speed sounds chart. Um, the same with the I, you've got the um, IGH, um, then the I and the dash and the E. Now that's called a chatty friend. Um, or a split die graph, depending on what you Google on the internet. Um, basically, the way that we introduce that to a child is we would say to the children um, that oh, those two letters have been really, really chatty. And the teacher said to them, right, we need to split you up. And they put a letter in between them. Um, so they're still seeing them as one sound and not an it and an e. So that's how we do those. The ones that are together where you've got two or three letters and they're sitting next to each other, they are called special friends. Um, and they're always joined together, just like some of the children are on the playground, um, and they always make the sound together. They're not individual. So um, those speed sounds charts are absolutely brilliant to support the children with their writing and their reading as they progress through the curriculum. So the resources that we used um, in class, so we've got the sound charts, um, which I've just explained to you, the speedy sound set to review the sounds. So these are the little cards. Um, on one side of the card, I think you can see it here at the bottom, the mm, um, one side you've got the letter and on the other side you've got a picture. So with the mm, we would introduce it as Maisie Mountain Mountains. So you've got a little Maisie sort of standing up next to the mountain. You draw down Maisie and then you go over the mountain and over the mountain. Um, and then you would introduce it as the mm sound. So they're sort of recognising it by picture and it can just provide that little bit more of a prompt for those children. Um, who might need it, especially as they're starting to learn the um, sounds. So um, they go through all right the way through. And as you start getting onto the special friends, you get the rhymes that go with them. So for the example, the unk, um, which the children absolutely love, I think I stink. Um, and that's not a disclosure. That is um, one of the rhymes on that card. So um, they are fantastic. And like I say, you can get those on Amazon. The large sound cards, that's what we use to introduce those sounds. It's exactly the same as the smaller ones, but on a larger scale. So it's nicer for when you're doing a, a large group activity. The green and red, the green and red word cards. Um, the green ones basically mean that the children can decode those words. The red ones um, basically mean that they can't thread them. They can't sound them out. So the words like the and my, um, they can't read those words without just knowing them because they're not decodable. Uh, Fred, our little frog that sits on our shoulder. The read or ink books, um, the ditties, and they go through the colours depending on the level of the children. And a pocket sounds chart to help with blending. Um, so with that, it's a blue pocket chart. You might see it in the background of some of the ch um, children's videos when they're zooming. And it's basically got where you can put the cards in it and you can make up words. 
And again, you don't need a pocket sounds chart at home. You can do it with the cards on the kitchen table, um, on the floor, in the garden, wherever suits you. And just have the cards laid out and encourage the children to sound out each sound individually, put them closer together and then blend the word. So the behaviour management strategies that we use, we touched upon some of these when we did the early years evening. Um, the ones that obviously we do lots and lots of praise. So we do our marshmallow claps, our fireworks, our hip hip hoorays. Um, and you will hear some of those in the Zoom calls that we do. Um, the marshmallow clap is basically you imagine you've got a giant marshmallow in front of you and you sort of clap it like that. But you can't quite close your hand. And then afterwards, which I absolutely love, you can eat it. Um, the hip hip hooray, you sort of put your hands on the hips as though you're doing the macarena and then you hooray. And the fireworks is when you sort of. So the children love those. And obviously you can add your own ones to it as well. I've uh, just got somebody else in the waiting room. Um, also, we do one, two, three for movement around the classroom. Now, in early years, um, we hold that one finger and it means the children can stand up quietly. Um, two fingers means that the children can um, turn to face the direction that they're travelling. And three fingers means that they can move quietly. Um, the reason we do this is for calm, quiet transitions throughout the classroom, um, especially when there's 30 children in there and it works wonderfully. So try the one, two, threes. Um, and it would help actually to remind the children of that ready for when they're coming back to school. Um, we do hedgehog hands, um, which basically means our hands are closed together like a spiky hedgehog and they sit in our laps. Um, and that just really makes sure the children are focused into what the teacher's saying. We sit the children in a V shape, which basically means that the teacher will be at the front and the children will be sort of, so you have a smaller group at the front then a couple more at the uh, next line, a couple more after that. And it just means that there's no children in the peripheral vision, which means that we can really hone into how your children are doing in their lessons. Um, slant as well. Um, basically, that, that means that they're sitting, they're listening, they're giving us their full attention, they're nodding, um, which I can see lots of you are doing as well. And they're tracking us as we're moving around the classroom. It basically means that their full attention is on us throughout the lesson. Um, the final one that we do across the whole school, actually, which is a really, really nice technique um, that it's mirrored across the whole school, is the hands up for um, silence, basically, to stop the children from talking. So it's lovely that if they're in the middle of doing a discovery time activity and we don't want to say stop, you know, you, you just put your hands up and the children all realise they all put their hands up and they stop talking as well. The key thing for that is that you don't talk whilst your hands up, which I really struggle with. Um, so there's some of the behaviour management techniques and obviously they might support you at home if you're um, sort of trying to mirror some of these classroom activities at home. So learning a sound and blending using Fred Talk. So Fred Talk is sounding the word out and segmenting it to support spelling and writing. So blending is basically when we are putting all the sounds together to read the word and segmenting means that we're breaking the word up and that usually is really good for spelling and writing. So, for example, dog would be d o g, um, and you'd encourage the children to say it over and over again, and sort of get a little bit quicker as they're saying it. So it'd be d o g, and then they start to hear that word. And it is a process; they won't get it straight away. Um, some of the children were blending by Christmas, so they can continue with that. Some of them is oral practice constantly. So things like oh, up to b e d, and encouraging them to start hearing that word. Um, go and get your k oat on. Um, and that will really, really help with their um, reading skills as they progress, because it just helps with their blending. So as with dog, you break up the word into the sounds and support the children to say it. So I'm going to show you some Fred talking on the next slide. Um, so bear with me. Oops. So we're going to do the word cat, um, much like some I did last night. So we're going to think about oh, how many sounds are in the word cat? And then the children will start thinking it and they'll start sort of sounding it out in their heads. Their hands at this point need to be behind their back. And then you'll say one, two, three, show me how many sounds. And hopefully they will hold up three fingers because there are three sounds. Now, the important thing to remember here that if they've got it wrong and they're holding up two or they're holding up four, hopefully they won't be holding up any more. Um, you just sort of say to them, oh, it's three. Well done. There's no you've got it wrong. It's just reminding them how many we're actually expecting. And then you wait for them to have the three fingers up. It is vital at this point that they don't have any less or any more fingers up because they will need this for the spelling element. So at that point, we turn it around, we tickle our noses and then we get out our squeezy fingers. Um, we've got a rhyme, so squeezy fingers. And then we sound out the word. So we remind them what the word is. So it's cat. And then we'll go at. Now, as a teacher, 
I would face it to the children, but the children would be looking at it like this, as though they're reading the word in front of them. So when you're modelling it to the children, you're doing it sort of so that they're looking at it, but when they're doing it, they're looking at the sounds themselves. The same as well um, when you're doing a word that's got a special friend in it, a digraph, um, two or three letters that go together to make one sound. We basically do exactly the same thing, but those two letters that go together to make one sound will just appear as one finger. So the word shop, for example, would still be three fingers. It would be sh, o, p. So that is really, really important that that still stays as one sound, even though it's a special friend. And it does help the children a lot to underline it as well when they're writing, because it really just highlights that they're special friends. It's good practice. So that's your Fred Fingers, your spelling. So when you hear us saying, make sure you remember your Fred Fingers, that's what we're talking about. Um, and it is fundamental for their writing, particularly in the early years. Um, and they won't necessarily get all the sounds in the right order. They won't necessarily hear all the sounds, but it's really, really good practice. So daily practicing of those would be fantastic. So some ways that you can help your child at home. Um, read to your children every single day. Um, encourage them to read to you as well. Talk about the stories that you're reading and the vocabulary in them. Now, all the stories that we have, they've got some fantastic um, words in them. We've got some excellent authors, Oliver Jeffers, Julia Donaldson, Michael Morpurgo. Um, they're absolutely amazing. And the vocabulary in them is phenomenal. So it's a lovely opportunity to share with the children. What does that word mean? What do you think it might mean? Um, asking lots of open ended questions. And that basically just means that questions that don't get a yes or no response. So you're looking for a more detailed answer and more of a sentence from them um, and share your opinions about the text. Oh, I really liked that story. It was amazing. Or I didn't really like that story. What do you think is going to happen at the end? And it just keeps the children um, guessing, keeps them interested and develops that language and that love of reading. So as Dr. Zeus said, you're never too old, too wacky, too wild to pick up a book and read to a child. Um, and we love stories um, in the early years and they do really have such a fundamental element to play. So how can another way of helping your child at home? You can talk to your children as much as possible. I have no issues with that at all. Um, and feed them almost the new and ambitious vocabulary. So, for instance, if I was saying, oh, let's eat our lunch now. I would sort of model to the children, let's munch our lunch now and really sort of get that word and make it feel as though, you know, you're almost eating it in front of them. Um, lots of voices and expression really support that as well. Let's scoff our lunch now. Let's devour our lunch now. And they're just amazing words. And that will support them as they go through the curriculum, particularly as they get into year one and two and they start doing more descriptive words in their writing. So rather than just eat, you're showing them munch, scoff and devour. Um, enriching conversations through description. So look at that rain. It looks like little diamonds sparkling on the window pane. Um, and have fun with words and languages. So I'm as hot as a spud in a cooking pot. Um, and the children absolutely crease up, particularly when you start introducing rhyme to it as well. And loads and loads of praise. You can't praise the children enough um, for using new words or interesting phrases. So ways to support you at home um, where you can find out this information. We have loads and loads of resources on our Google Drive, um, some of which I'm about to show you, um, especially to support children with the practicing of their handwriting and their letter formation. And that is really key is that they are forming those letters correctly. Uh, and again, those rhymes really help that. So, for instance, with the dinosaur, um, you're going to go around the dinosaur's bottom, up his long neck and down to his tail. Um, with the um, apple, you go round the apple and down the leaf. So it's actually teaching, it's, it's visualising it in a child's mind and teaching exactly what that letter should look like. Um, the same as I said before with Maisie Mountain Mountain, you go down Maisie, over the mountain, over the mountain. Um, obviously, we, as I said before, we have got the sounds recorded on the, the school YouTube channel under set one, set two and set three. Majority of children in reception will be set one. Um, and starting to eke into set two. And as they go into year one, it will be set two, set three that they'll be focusing on. And as they head into year two, year two, they'll be focusing on set three. So that's a sort of average, but obviously every child, as I said before, is different. So these are the sounds and the sort of pictures. Um, and again, you can find these on the internet, you can find them on the Google Drives um, and on, on the general phonics activities that we've put on the Google Drive for your year groups as well. So. You've got the set one sound chart 
which the children use daily. And it'd be really, really good if you could to sort of have a copy of this on hand for when the children are doing their writing at home, because they do use it a lot in the classroom. And they sort of when they're trying to remember what a sound looks like, they will refer to this speed sounds chart and they'll go, oh, yeah, that's the one. Um, and then it just encourages them to write. It takes away that scariness to writing. Um, set two and set three. Set two is the top of that other um, picture and set three is the bottom part of that other picture. And as I said before, the year groups that they are generally assigned to. But again, it's a fluid programme and it's we, we assess the children every sort of six weeks um, to see where they're at. And then we will put them in a group according to that, that level. So no child's left behind. No child goes unnoticed. Every child is individually planned for. So the handwriting sheets, um, as I said before, on the Google Drive, these are individual sounds. And so as they learn them or as they do the video, it'd be really good to practice this. Obviously, if you can't print them out, that's absolutely fine. Um, we do some cracking drawings in class, particularly when you do the yes sound and it's the yak. That's a very interesting one to have to draw. Um, but you can draw those and the children can use that as a guide. You don't have to print this, this form out. You can do the dot to start the letter, but it's just as a guide there to show you exactly um, what that letter looks like and the rhyme that goes accompanying with it. So our Ditty photocopies, um, we've got a, a folder of this on our reception Google Drive. Basically, this is for the children that are beginning to blend. So you sort of have this before you go on to the, the full on ditties in school. Um, and it tells you on this slide, um, and there's lots more of this information in the pack, exactly what ditty you're looking at. So the first one is pop. It tells you the sounds that are covered in that ditty. So that one's got the a, ah, the s, the d, the t, the i, the n, the p, the g, and the o. Um, some word time practice. So that basically means using those sounds and having a go at making words with those and seeing if the children can practice reading it. So you might have at, you might have dog, you might have pin um, and just practicing those. And if you can do it on green card, that's wonderful. If you can't, you don't have green card, just on a piece of paper, that's fine. And sometimes it's really ideal to have dots underneath each of the sounds. Um, when they're individual sounds and a line under those special friends as well, because that just reminds the children exactly um, what they're blending. So they're, they're called sound dots. The green words are there. So you've got not, you've got got, sip, pop, dad, um, did and dog. Sorry, I can't read it. It's too small. Um, but obviously the bigger one of this is on the Google Drive. I've just tried to give you an example on the um, presentation. And then our red words, which we explained before, are the words that the children cannot blend themselves. They just need to learn. And most of those will be the reception keywords that you've all had a copy of the list of. So in this case, it's I and the. And the way that you would do it is you'd go through the sounds that are in that book, first of all, and make sure that they're really familiar with those. You would then go through the green words and you might play a game of hide and seek with them. You might just hold them up and sort of go through them. Um, you might sort of play a game of pairs sort of thing with them. Whatever works for you and your children, it's just to get them familiar with those words. Go through the red words and then you emerge into the reading of the text. And the reason that that's done is so that children are completely and utterly confident before they start reading. Um, and it's that confidence that makes them amazing readers. And our progress alone um, over well the last six years has been phenomenal um, with our phonics and with our reading. Um, and it is a real strength of the school. So it is working. The programme is amazing um, and I'm a real advocate for it. But and there's loads and loads of information. Ruth Miskin has got a Facebook page um, and that's really good. She puts up some top tips. She's got some videos on YouTube that you can access. Um, the Oxford Owl website has got loads and loads of books on there that you can access any text for the children um, all at that sort of the right level for them. So I think they've got something like 150 ebooks on there. So um, plenty to keep you occupied. Um, so here is a copy, an example of the ditty that we've just explained about. So this is ditty one um, and exactly what it looks like. So it, it tells you the order to do it in. Um, got the sounds you go through, the green words, the red words, and then you start reading the sentences. Now, the way that I tend to do it is I will read the sentences to the children first. Um, just again, to get that familiarity, then I would get the children to read it. And the first one, they will be very slow. It will be an I and then a G. And then you sort of encourage them to make that word got um, and they will be sort of breaking each of those words down because they're new words to them. And the second reading of it that they're doing, I would expect them to be a little bit more confident. 
and then you might play some games and you might sort of play a jumping game so i got and then you pause and wait for the children to say pop you know because they're they're following that word with you and it just makes it quite fun um, and a bit of a game for them so as i said before the ruth misking portal uh, parent website is there the facebook for ruth misking is there as well phonics play i know we've told you about that not entirely sure how long the um, password is going to last but even if that goes there are still some free games that you can access at any point on phonics play um, and they are really really good for blending so buried treasure is a really good one um, and the alien one they really enjoy as well and as i said before the oxford owl website um, and that is all on there for you to um, access as well so Final quote of the day, um, reading feeds the imagination, it expands horizons and offers new and exciting ways of seeing and making sense of our lives and the world around us. And that's by Michael Morpurgo. Um, and I think that just sort of sums the whole of the experience of reading up really. So I will open it up to any questions. Um, I think I've spoken at you enough tonight. So does anybody have anything that they would like to ask with regards to the um, Read Write Inc programme? Um, if you do, just jot the question down um, or be brave and unmute yourself. Um, but obviously bearing in mind that it will be on YouTube. So um, if not, we'll give it a minute or so. Um, if not, just daily practice. And I can't flag it up. I know Mrs Cullen is. I'll go with you in a second, Mrs Cullen. <laughs> I can't flag it up enough. The importance of um, making sure that those sounds are done every single day um, just to keep it in their memory. So Mrs Cullen. Okay I was um, not going to ask a question which is good. Um, I was going to add a little something just saying on the um, FSU um, Google Drive we've got a document and we're building up a library of really useful links that we use in maths and literacy activities. Um, so we have started to add to those um, the Oxford uh, Reading Tree books, um, the Owl Reading Tree books are on there, there's a link to those, but also um, with regard to red, red words, there are a couple of really good um, song videos on YouTube um, about tricky words, and you may actually have heard your children singing these because once they get in your head, they're stuck. Um, but they're really good to watch because the children find them really enjoyable and they do actually focus on the, the red words as we call them and they really get them, um, you know, to remember how to write them, how to read, um, how they're read. So I'm just saying keep an eye on the Google Drive and there are links um, that we're building on, we're adding to all the time. That's all I want to say. Thank you very much. So I don't think there's any questions that anybody has got. So obviously, if you do think of any after this presentation, that's absolutely fine. Just email into the FSU website uh, or email, sorry, and we will answer those for you. But thank you once again for um, joining us this evening. Um, it's been lovely and we look forward to seeing you on the Zooms tomorrow. <laughs> thank you very much, everybody. Take care. <laughs>